Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Thursday, November 16th. And once again, we're extremely honored to have with us Judge Andrew Napolitano, a uh, real American, a defender of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, but not only a defender of it, an expert in knowledge of what it is, what it represents, and really how we've lost it. Judge, thanks so much for being on today. Oh, uh, Gerald, it's a pleasure to be with you, my dear friend. Thank you for having me. Now, I love being on with you because what you say and you give uh, nobody else in your position uh, with the authority and knowledge is doing what you're doing. And you have an well, article. Probably the, your, your viewers should know that these podcasts that we do uh, every week for me, are the highlight of the week. But they're just the tip of the iceberg of our relationship because we have these conversations without a camera and a microphone all the time. <laughs> yep, yep. And we have great times together. You know, Judge, you wrote an article here about, um, again, how they're, how they're robbing us of our rights and, and, and more and more looking into every aspect of our lives that they have no business doing. And, and it's about the FBI and zero click. And before we go into that, you know, let's go back. You know, you read an article, uh, another great article as with this one, about how they've set up all these agencies that are robbing us of our freedom and our peace. And one of them was about, you know, after 9-11, how they created Homeland Security. <laughs> And, you know, what, what the hell is Homeland Security done for our security? Please tell me. And I think you also mentioned that they have some, what, 900 and, uh, excuse me, 250,000 employees? Yes, 240,000 uh, cops, really, and support personnel for the cops. This is a federal police department which dwarfs the FBI. There's only 8,000, eight FBI agents. The 240,000 federal cops that work, you know, they don't all wear uniforms and some of them are support staff yeah. uh, that have given the federal government extraordinary authority to inveigle their way in all sorts of uh, human endeavors, nowhere contemplated, uh, under the Constitution. Um, all of this came in the administration of George W. Bush. Throw in the Education Department, also not countenanced by the Constitution. That only has 4,400 bureaucrats, but they regulate and give out money to local school boards so they have extraordinary control. Used to be had the PTA, the Parent Teachers Association, then you had an elected local school board. Forget about it. They're all in March step, in, in lockstep to Albany and Trenton, New York and New Jersey first, and then to the federal uh, government. Madison and Jefferson would be flipping in their graves because there is just no authority whatsoever for a federal police department and for federal control of education. Think about it. If they can control what is taught in the schools, they can control the minds of young people as they grow up and become uh, voting adults. And that's exactly what happened in this past election. Yes. You had a yes. lot of young people that are brainwashed into believing and swallowing crap that they shoved down their throat and put in their minds. And they, a lot of them went out to vote this year, uh, voting for things that they know nothing about and really know the details of. And so that it's working. And then when you look at all these bureaucrats, as I call them, because the people that get into government and take these jobs, most of them can't get a job in the real world. So they suck into the political system. So now you have your voters because they're not going to vote for the other guy or the other woman. They're going to vote for the ones that, that pay their salary. Correct. That, that's what's building it as well. So you have this article in here about also how our rights are being stolen from us and how they're spying on us by the FBI. I mean, the FBI has become a, a, a domestic surveillance organization, the goal of which is not to fight crime, but to anticipate and predict crime. And one of the tools that the FBI has used uh, to do this is called zero click. 
ZeroClick was developed by an Israeli uh, software company, the FBI under Trump. I can't imagine Trump knew about it. I don't even think Jim Comey knew about it. I don't know what Comey knew, but some high ranking management in the FBI bought this software for $5 million <laughs> and they began experimenting with it from a warehouse in New Jersey. Zero click means that the owner of the software can download whatever is in the target's computer, desktop or oh. mobile device, without tricking the target into clicking on it. So they experimented with this. The Senate Intelligence Committee, Senator Ron Wyden, who's a hard lefty, but who is the fiercest defender of civil liberties in the entire Senate right now, he got wind of it dragged Chris Ray before the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee, testified in secret. Chris Ray, the director of the FBI, said, oh, don't worry about it. We just got it because we want to know how it works in case the bad guys use it. Baloney. But the Senate Intelligence Committee fought that nonsense. Then Joe Biden became president. To his credit, he heard about it. He said to the um, uh, attorney general, you're not using it. Get rid of it. It's unconstitutional. So they stopped uh, using it, we thought. Then some reporters filed Freedom of Information Act requests with the FBI, and they got court documents showing that it has been used, emails from high-ranking DOJ and FBI people showing how they showcased this. So now Senator Wyden's saying, well, uh, Director Ray." You misled us under oath. You said it was only bought so you could see how it worked. And now it turns out you're experimenting on unwitting Americans. There's no search warrant here. They just plugged this stuff in. They were in New Jersey. For all I know, they downloaded everything that's from my mobile device. How the hell would I know? Uh, they just did this without a search warrant and got all this information about these people. And you misled us under oath. And by the way, your FBI agents have that have engaged in a conspiracy to 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 perpetrate computer hacking. So you misled us under oath, and your agents are conspiring to commit the crimes that they're supposed to investigate. This is a rogue organization, in my view, uncountenanced by the Constitution. It should be defunded and disbanded. Let the let the states investigate crimes. It's not a federal function was never intended under the Constitution. This is an example of a totalitarian government. Uh, you know, you said, you know, that this guy testified in, in, in secret. Who the hell are they to testify in secret? Let, that, let's start with that. Oh, we, we, we have no right to know anything. Only the club has the right to know. Who the hell? Oh, oh, a senator... Hey, little boys and girls, remember the word public servant? Right. You work for you know, us. It, no, you it, know. It's, it's we, pretty bad. We so you. we only know about this because Senator Wyden is as disgusted with the secrecy as you and I are. And he decided to break it. So he wrote letters to Chris Ray, the director of the FBI, quoting Ray's testimony harshly critical of this program, and then he published uh, the letters. Because he, as a senator, when he learns this stuff in secret, is not allowed to mention it on the Senate floor or tell other senators about it. That's how absurd yeah. the rules are. Yeah. They he make had had enough, and he decided to publicize this. The New York Times wrote an article about it. Now you and I uh, are, are uh, talking about it. Oh, there's, there's uh, it's a, it's a, look, at, look at the CIA. How many people in the CIA? 21,000. 21,000 foreign spies. Half of them are, are the president's private army, like in uh, Libya. They can wage a secret war that Mrs. Clinton and President uh, Obama waged because they wanted to slaughter Gaddafi, a, a prosperous and wonderful country, now back to the poverty that it had before uh, Gaddafi uh, was there. He was tortured to death by his political opponents. Well, the Americans permitted them to do it. Look, all of this was done by the CIA at the direction of uh, of the president. Again, 
nowhere countenanced by the Constitution. Where does the president have his own secret army in the Constitution? Nowhere. But that's what the CIA has become. Donald okay. Trump used it to murder uh, General Soleimani. Uh, but Biden did it to murder, uh, I forget the guy's name, the doctor that was number two to, uh, to bin Laden. He's retired and living by himself and saying his prayers and they uh, evaporated him. Obama used this theory of the secret army to kill Americans who were in Yemen and said it was too bad they were collateral damage, even though he aimed for them. It's reprehensible what the presidency has become because of things like secret FBI, secret testimony, secret CIA, secret army. And the Constitution, by the way, says no money shall be spent from the public treasury except that which is recorded in a public journal. Go and find, try to find the public journal that records what all these secret agencies spend money on. You can't find it. It doesn't exist. You see, everyone listening, this is why you need to tune in and spread the word. What Judge Napolitano is saying to you, no one else is saying. No one anywhere, any place. And this is a man with the judicial authority and knowledge to back it up. And what's happened to this country is, is so, it's so seriously uh, damaging to the human spirit and what this nation was founded upon and this is only one example of how it's going down in so many different ways. And so we really need to reverse this trend or else it, it's going to get much, much worse. And, you know, what? by the way, you mentioned the CIA. Now, what's their budget? How much do we pay them? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Notwithstanding that clause in the Constitution, no monies, not some. No monies shall be spent from public funds except those recorded in a public journal. Madison knew exactly what he was doing. Madison knew how to prevent tyranny. But the, the big government, both parties, Republican and Democrat, and their allies uh, in the court and the presidents have found ways around this. And, you, you know, know, even... Justice Scalia used to complain to me about this. And then he would say, and every time somebody brings a lawsuit to challenge it, the court throws the lawsuit out saying you don't have a, you don't have a standing to sue. And, and he was right. He was right. The courts have found a way to avoid addressing these issues. Scalia himself uh, said to me, paper money is unconstitutional because the Constitution says money's got to be backed by a, a precious metal, only gold or silver can be money. He goes, do you think the Supreme Court would ever enforce that? Of course not. The Supreme Court's afraid of what big government would do to them. Ah, well, if the Supreme Court is afraid of big government, can imagine how the rest of us feel? Oh, well, I want two things. You said the Supreme Court is afraid, right? No, cowardly little boys and girls are afraid. Let's yes. not put it in the whole system here. Cowardly little boys and girls. And number two, you kept using the term that this guy misled the Senate committee. He lied. They used the term misled. You lied. Well, it's the same, it's the same uh, statute as perjury. So the chief federal law enforcement officer of the land is now credibly accused of committing the very crime that he and his 8,000 agents uh, investigate. And uh, a significant number of those agents are accused of conspiring to commit oh. the crime of computer hacking, a federal crime that they are hired to investigate. <laughs> so is the FBI rogue or is the FBI rogue? I mean, this, this is a pretty simple question uh, to answer, but big government, Republicans and Democrats will still fund these rogue agencies. Republicans and Democrats, the Lindsey Graham types, will still fund the CIA, will still fund the Department of Homeland Security, will still fund the Department of Education, will still fund the National Security Security Agency. It should be called what it is, the National Spying Agency. Yeah, National Spying Agency. I, I think that these secret 
federal entities have dirt on members of Congress and without doing so directly, make it clear if you don't increase our budget, you're going to see some stuff you don't want to see uh, in social media and in the newspapers in a couple of weeks. And that's the way the government operates. Well, again, you know, we just had the, the midterm elections in the United States and the cover of the Trends Journal, uh, it was uh, U.S. elections, Democrats versus Republicans equal Bloods versus Crips, yeah. murderers and thieves. Yeah. That's what this country, and murderers and thieves. You just mentioned the murderers, the Obama, the, the, the Bushes, the, the Clintons. And oh, and remember Hillary Clinton over there when they're doing that interview on one of the TV shows, the woman asks her, how did you feel when you found out Gaddafi was killed? And she said, we came, we saw, he died. He, <laughs> I mean, right? I'm not making this up. No, you're not making it up. And, and uh, your, your laughter was, was to, to mimic what she did because she yeah. laughed. We're not she laughing left. at this. It's reprehensible. These are the mentally ill people that are destroying our lives. Yes. And there are, this is not a, it's democracy. You know, oh, here, we've been talking about it. I've been talking about it. Uh, Scott Ritter, uh, McGregor, about a false flag is going to lead us into war with Russia. And we are at war with them. It's not a proxy war. We're at war with them already training troops, alleged our, our troops being there, Americans being there. And as I said, as we said before, if I asked you to give me money and, and arms and, and grenades to go kill the guy next door, you're an accessory to the crime. And so now they're going to use a false flag to make it legit. And we just saw what happened uh, uh, yesterday when Poland came out and said, Oh, we were bombed, you know, in, with a, a missile from Russia and two people were killed. Oh, two people were killed? Hey, how many were killed in Yemen? Oh, how many were killed in Libya? How many were killed in Afghanistan? How many? Were, oh, oh, two people were killed. Oh, my God. The first words out of Biden's mouth. We're going to do everything we can. We will defend Poland. We will defend NATO. Oh, we? Oh, you're going there? What kind of country is this when we got one clown saying what we are going to do? So the United States government, as we speak, I don't even, you and I have talked about this. You don't see it in the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or CNN or Fox. We have 40,000 troops, 40,000 in Poland at the Polish-Ukraine border working with 50,000 Polish troops. And the president of Poland has said, we have to get Crimea away from Russia and back to the Ukraine. I mean, this is madness of a very, very high order. This is actually an area where I agreed with Trump for all of his narcissism and ignorance about the government. He was right that we should not be involved in NATO. Okay. NATO may have had a vitality in the late 40s, but it should have had a shelf life of five or 10 years. Because yep. if this missile was a Russian missile and was aimed at Poland, then we would be legally obliged to enter that war. And that would be absurd. Yeah. McGregor, Giraldi, Ritter, you, I, some other colleagues of ours that do this for a living, all predicted yep. this kind of false flag to drag NATO and drag the United States uh, in. Fortunately, saner held have prevailed this morning. I don't know what the truth is, but but the the consensus seems to be this was an accident because Putin is just too smart to have ordered this, too cunning to have permitted this, knowing that the last thing he wants is ninety thousand troops and fifty thousand poles and forty thousand Americans. Uh, entering uh, Ukraine. All right. Here's the headline from CNN. NATO chief, quote, this is not Ukraine's fault. The deadly strike in Poland, deadly strike, the de deadly strike they use, right? Killed two right. people, 
Hundreds of thousands being slaughtered all over the world. Hey, how about what's going on in Tigray? What's Tigray? Is that like a gray tea? No, no, it's a place in Ethiopia. Oh, tens of thousands of people that were killed, but we won't talk about that. They don't count. Anyway, the deadly strike in Poland was likely fired. You ready? By Ukraine's defense. This is CNN. Ready now for this? Quote, <laughs> but Russia bears ultimate responsibility as Aye. it continues its illegal war, NATO chief says. Wait a minute. You say Ukraine fired it, but Russia bears ultimate responsibility? NATO chief? How about a NATO chief piece of crap? No, no, to be proper, a NATO chief piece of shit. Who are you shoving down your throat that Russia bears responsibility for it when somebody else did it? I mean, this is the mentality of the globalists in Western Europe and in the American State Department. Blame everything on Russia. Try to drive Putin from office. And uh, innocents are slaughtered in the process, and we see that happening uh, in Ukraine. Oh. Who, who, the, who the hell cares? I mean, this is what their attitude is. I mean, for what he said to have been true, uh, the Ukrainians would have had to have gotten Russian hardware, Russian uh, projectiles, and aimed them uh, at Poland and pretended uh, that it was Russia. You got it. You got and it. then for all that to have happened, somehow it's still Russia's fault yeah. that Ukraine captured their hardware, captured their missiles, and fired it at Poland. Yeah. I mean, I'm scratching my head. This is the ultimate head scratcher because it's just totally, utterly without belief. And this is uh, how but they the mainstream media will will tout it as if it is believable and, and as and if it is as if it is truthful. Yeah. But this is the how they take you to war. The propaganda by these freaks. They're mentally ill people. You know, we had the midterm elections in America, as we said, you know, the Bloods and Crips, you voted for the murders and thieves. They steal our money, give it to the big corporations, banks, they too big to fail. And, and all the wars and all the murders and on and on and on. So it really added up to nothing. And um, it, it's just more of the same. And we need a third party here or else this country's finished. And as I keep saying, and will continue to say, there's nobody in America that should be the president that will give the country what it needs and what it is and, and bring it back than Judge Andrew Napolitano. Well, thank you, Gerald. Um, I mean, I love all of our, all of our work no, together. No, it's, 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 because he's like more Donald more Trump apparent. running again. He now, you're a loser. You're not going to win. Look what happened right. in the midterm elections. You got to be a complete imbecile to see where the Trump power is. If the Trump power was so strong, the, de the repulsive kittens would have won very big. Right. A end of story. Right. End of story. So you're going to lose. Good. You're going to lose. And you're going to get, you're going to, the Democrats are going to come back. Right. We need Imagine to. Imagine Joe Biden or Kamala Harris in the White House with huge majorities in both houses of Congress. That's what Trump uh, will visit on us and the Republicans oh, yeah, will visit on us if they are crazy enough to nominate him. If they nominate Trump and he runs against Biden, the issue will not be Biden's incompetence, which it should be. The issue will be Trump's character, personality and alleged crimes. Yep. And if Republicans want to make that the issue, they're going to get buried. Yep. Now, this is terrible what's going on. We need you, Judge. And everybody, please do what you can to spread the word of freedom, peace, and justice. And remember, the Trends Journal is no magazine like it. And we're giving you everything we can, history before it happens. And as Judge Napolitano said, with the whole Ukraine war breaking out, himself, Phil Giraldi, uh, Scott, uh, Scott Ritter, uh, McGregor, and, and others, you know, a few of us have really been on this and giving you everything that you need to know what's going on, what's next, and what you need to do. So please spread the word. And Judge, please consider running for president of the United States. We need you. Thank you so God much. Gerald. Thank and you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week.